Hello friends and welcome to D&D Daily. My name is Sage and today I'm going to be doing a deep dive into the Light Domain subclass. In this video I'm going to be taking a look at its features, its strengths, and its weaknesses and I'm going to give a bit of an example build at the end. Before jumping into these videos I like to talk about how I personally evaluate a subclass. I like to find what is unique about a subclass and take my build from there and sprout it from that seed. If the subclass offers a combat style that only it can pull off, then I'm going to use that combat style even if it's less effective than the base classes. Now with that in mind, let's jump in to the Light Domain Cleric. At level 1 we get the Light Cantrip, we get a Warding Flare feature, as well as the Burning Hands and Fairy Fire spells. Getting the Light Cantrip for free gives us another Cleric Cantrip, and Cleric Cantrips are honestly not that great, so it's okay. We're going to pick up maybe Thaumaturgy where we wouldn't have had it, and I think Thaumaturgy is my favorite cleric cantrip, so I, I guess I'd be a little bit excited about that. Warding Flare gives disadvantage on a single attack a few times a day as a reaction. This is pretty good at keeping us alive, notably is stronger at lower levels where they don't have multi-attack, and you really don't have a ton of uses so you want to spend on people who are really going to hurt if they hit you. Moving into our spells, Burning Hands is going to be our premier blasting spell at level 1 and it's going to fall off by level 2. Whereas Fairy Fire, on the other hand, is going to be good at all levels. The advantage on attacks is really good, but more importantly, the counter, the soft counter to invisibility is what's going to last late into the campaign. At level 2 we get our channel divinity, Radiance of Dawn. Radiance of Dawn is the best, I repeat, the best blasting spell at this level. Blasting feature, blasting anything at this level and will remain relevant until about level 5 where we pick up Fireball. Now it scales really slow so it's not going to be good later in the campaign, but at the beginning it is so, so good. On average it's going to do 13 damage to every enemy within a radius of 30 feet of you. To put that in perspective, Burning Hands is doing 10.5 damage on average in a smaller radius. A fighter on average is going to be doing around 10 damage with its action when it smacks someone and it's only doing it to one enemy and if it misses it does zero damage where if they save against the Warding Flare it still does half damage. There is nothing better at doing damage in the game than Warding Flare at these early levels, so take advantage of it and absolutely explode your enemies. Now, even though it falls off at later levels, it will always dispel darkness magic. That's pretty important. I don't know if you've ever had a combat against somebody who's utilizing darkness, but it's hella annoying, and just having a feature in your back pocket just to end that is going to be useful once or twice in your campaign. At level 3, we get the Flaming Sphere and the Scorching Ray spells. Flaming Sphere just isn't as good as Spiritual Weapon and could easily be replaced by it completely. However, if you are attached to being a Fire Cleric, go ahead and use Flaming Sphere. It's not that much worse than Spiritual Weapon. And along that same vein, if you would rather pick up an extra spell than have to kind of double up on your bonus actions, you could just use Burning Sphere and then have an extra spell prepared instead of Spiritual Weapon. Moving on to Scorching Ray, it is going to be our single target blast, probably for the remainder of the campaign. To support Scorching Ray, Fairy Fire or Bless being set up is going to help it hit more often, which is really going to help because missing with your Scorching Rays really sucks. You want to make sure you're hitting those and it's going to make your damage much higher. At level 5, we get the Illustrious Fireball, as well as the Daylight spell. Now, Fireball is probably why you're here. It's a premier blasting spell, and at level 5, it's going to be our main blasting spell. It's effective and it's versatile. Now we can do blasting that absolutely annihilates just a bunch of small creatures and we still have the cleric support to help out. So yeah, we're kind of cleric blaster wizard type build. Now keep in mind that most clerics that are doing a ton of damage are using spiritual guardians up close. Cleric's long range damage output isn't great. That's why the mid range is usually a support based class. Here we change that. That's what is different about the Light Domain Cleric versus other clerics, is they can be a mid-range caster that is still doing pretty insane damage output. And Fireball is going to be useful at all levels. Even in our later levels where we have better spells, Fireball is still going to be useful because it can use a bunch of our lower level and mid-range level spell slots. Daylight would be so much better if it actually created daylight, you know, sunlight, instead it's just light. This is just a light cantrip on steroids. Light cantrip does 20 feet bright light, 20 feet dim light. This one does 60 feet bright light, 60 feet dim light. So it's just three times a light cantrip for a third level spell. I don't know how often you're going to need that big of a light versus just a light cantrip. I imagine few and far between. But 
that doesn't mean never. There are ch times when that could be useful. It's just a little unfortunate how often it's going to come up. You might think, hey, the daylight spell breaks darkness if you cast it a level higher, but our channel divinity breaks all darkness no matter what level it was cast at. So it's redundant in that regard as well. At level six, we're going to improve our warding flare, being able to use it to protect our allies within 30 feet of us as well. I think warding flare is an okay feature and doubling up on its resource is okay but protecting a squishy ally or someone who's downed you know it'll have moments where it's really clutch definitely but overall spending a whole feature on getting it it's a little bit on the lower end of powerful now where this feature really really stands out is if an enemy is going for a big spell attack like inflict wounds or if it's an assassin going for that deadly sneak attack being able to do a warding flare in that case okay that's where it gets really powerful. I talked a lot about Guardian of Faith in the Life Domain video, but here it has some extra utility because of Wall of Fire. Both of these spells are area control spells. Both get way stronger when forced movement is involved. They're going to do a lot more damage instead of just controlling area if your team relies on forced movement. Now there's some interesting synergies where you can create a Wall of Fire. So, okay, I'll paint the scene. You are being swarmed by a thousand ghouls. You create a wall of fire around yourself with the fire damage pointing outward, and then you put a Guardian of Faith dead center. Now these ghouls have to push through both fire and the Guardian of Faith, and you kind of created a region of protection for yourselves. Eh, very situational, yes, but be creative. You could also, you know, pin the Guardian behind them on one side of the wall and the wall of fire on the other side. Of course, it's two actions. I know this isn't going to be happening often. I'm just giving some ideas, basically. Out of the two, Wall of Fire is gonna be way better. It's a better area control, it's a better spell. I love Wall of Fire, I think it's excellent. The Guardian of Faith is okay, and I think it'll always be secondary to Wall of Fire, but who knows, maybe you can come up with some cool ways to use it. One of the most simple ones is if you're taking a long rest and you're going to get your spell slot back anyways, you might as well throw it up to protect your rest site. At level 8, we're going to get to choose between Potent Spellcasting and Blessed Strikes. I'm going to be taking Potent Spellcasting because that's what we are. We are Potent Spellcaster. Uh, blessed Strikes is relying on us using a weapon, and I just don't see us doing that. If someone's up close to us, we're probably going to be doing a cantrip even in that case. At level 9, we get Flame Strike as well as Scrying. Flame Strike is an incredibly perplexing spell to me because it's two levels higher than Fireball and worse in nearly every single way. It really only has a few things going for it. Half of its damage is Radiant. It has a higher hitbox, so it, you cast it and it has a lower radius, but a higher hitbox, so I guess if you have a flying enemy and a grounded enemy, you might be able to hit them both. As well as it scales a bit better, where it scales at 2d6 before level increase instead of 1d6 like Fireball. But all those things pale, pale in comparison to the fact that it's two levels lower, doing the same amount of damage, hitting a bigger area at a further range. Perplexing. Why did they make this fifth level? I don't know. Fireball is just so much better. Here we get Scrying. I'm going to encourage you to be very flavorful with this. With this particular cleric, I could see you looking into a flame to look at the, you know, to look at Georgia. I don't know. The problem with scrying for me is that you probably just could have slept and prepared it the next day. It's that situational that it usually can wait a day. And so unfortunately, it just kind of feels like we're wasting our prepared spells. And that goes for both of our fifth level spells as they just kind of feel like they were a waste. Moving into our subclass capstone feature, we get Corona of Light, and here is another weird one. Leave it to the player's handbook to have some weird features going on. So what's weird about this is the fact that we can cast it infinite number of times, but it only lasts a minute. So it's not like a toggle, it's something we have to keep using on ourselves. but we want to keep using it on ourselves whenever light isn't at a disadvantage to us because we want to go into combat with this active but not have to use our action to cast it. The reason for that is that when we have this cast, any of our fire or Radiant damage is going to make them throw at disadvantage, which is pretty awesome. It means that we stay relevant as a blaster into those late levels because we keep making them fill their saving throws, which is going to increase our damage. And if we can mix in any debuffs with our damage, it's also going to make them fill those as well. We'll get into that in the build section. Now, because we're always going to want this on, we're basically going to be a beacon of massive light, 120 feet of light 
all the time unless light is at a disadvantage. So if we're in a social situation, I would probably be a shining bright light, which could either be awesome or a little bit weird. I kind of lean in towards the weird, like, I don't know, just being a sun all the time just feels a little bit weird to me, but we are a light domain cleric, so maybe that's what we're going for. All right, so build time. We are here to be a blaster. This is the cleric blaster with one possible exception, but that'll be for another video. But being a cleric blaster, we are the best blaster in the first levels, thanks to our channel divinity. We pick up fireball, which is going to keep us relevant for the mid game. Once we hit those really late levels, I'm talking like level 17, our premier spell is going to be the eighth level sunburst. What's really good about this spell is it does great damage, great area, but it's going to have disadvantage thanks to our Chrono of Light on their saving throws. And if they fill it, they're blinded for a minute. So now we can give a really devastating debuff along with our great damage. Another spell I'd be looking at at those later levels is Firestorm. What's really nice about Firestorm is you can really mold it around the combat to only hit your enemies. So if your allies and the enemies are all tangled up, you can mold it in such a way to only hit the enemies and protect your allies. Past that, chuck a ton of fireballs. Even at level 17, you can basically chuck fireballs out like candy on Halloween and just blast everything, everything at disadvantage. Pretty awesome. When it comes to our single target damage, because all of this has been a lot of area damage, when it comes to single target damage, we might consider taking the Hexblood Lineage to get Hex, and then use Scorching Ray for some really great damage, and it could be upcast to scale that damage as well, so it has really great synergy. Our main play style is just going to be a mid-range caster, like normal clerics, but instead of focusing on support, we might do a bit of that, but we're going to be focused on blasting. Notably, all of our blasting spells aren't concentration, so we can still set up some awesome concentration spells, like Bless for example, and then get to town. At the end of the day, it's a pretty straightforward subclass as far as what it's meant to do. It's very straightforward, it almost builds itself. However, it offers a completely alternative playstyle to the cleric's normal playstyle, so it has a very specific and important niche to hold among the subclasses. This has been my deep dive into the Light Domain Cleric. We are D&D Daily. We release new D&D content every single day, so I will see you tomorrow. Peace.